Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the adenylylcyclase protein kinase A pathway. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing adenylylcyclase enzymes. We've discussed the structure of adenylylcyclase enzymes. We've discussed that to activate a membrane-bound adenylylcyclase enzyme, you need to dimerize the C1A and the C2A domains together to produce as an active enzyme, which will then catalyze the cyclase reaction, which is this conversion of adenosine triphosphate into cyclic AMP and pyrophosphate. What I now want to discuss is the classification of these nine adenylcyclase enzymes into four families. Okay, right. So the first family then is the calcium calmodulin sensitive family of adenylcyclase enzymes. Okay, now this contains free adenylcyclase enzymes which are all activated by calcium calmodulin complexes. Okay, now this isn't particularly important as far as our pathway is concerned, as far as the adenylcyclase uh, protein kinase A pathway is concerned, but just to have a broad picture of the classification of adenylcyclase enzymes, this is important. Okay, so. The uh, free adenylcyclase enzymes, then, that are within this family are adenylcyclase 1, adenylcyclase 3, and adenylcyclase 8. Okay, so if calcium goes up in the vicinity of these free adenylcyclase enzymes, you'll get calcium calmodulin complexes uh, going up, and those will activate these free adenylcyclases, so they promote the activation of the adenylcyclases, and hence these three are put into this family together. Okay, so the next family uh, is known as the G-beta-gamma stimulative family. Okay, and this is a little bit more interesting as far as uh, the adenylcyclase protein kinase A pathway is concerned. Okay, these free adenylcyclases that are going to be in this family, they are not activated by G beta gamma complexes, at least not alone. Okay, uh, however, if they, the, these adenylcyclases which are in this family have been activated by an alpha S. GTP subunit, which we're about to discuss in a moment, okay? Alpha S GTP subunits can activate all nine of the membrane-bound adenylcyclases, okay? So if the free enzymes that are in this family have been uh, activated by an adenyl, sorry, by an alpha S GTP subunit, then what can happen is the G beta gamma complex, which is the other part of the, um, um, well, the activated heterotrimeric G protein. Remember, once you've activated the heterotrimeric G protein, you get the alpha GTP subunit, and then you also get the beta gamma complex. Okay, The other portion of the beta gamma complex, the beta gamma subunit, can come and bind to the adenylcyclase, and it will increase the activation further. Okay, So it potentiates the activation that the alpha S GTP subunit can give. Okay, I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, I'll draw you a nice picture of it. Um, so for now, let's say that the adenylcyclase enzymes, which are going to be in this family, are adenylcyclase 2, adenylcyclase 4, and adenylcyclase 7. Okay, so that's the G beta gamma stimulated family. Next, we have the calcium and G alpha. Whoops, missed the and. How can I rectify this? Can I turn that into an and? Yes, and uh, G uh, alpha inhibited. Okay. Okay, and I think I should put G alpha I inhibited. Okay, right. Uh, so this family is going to contain two adenylcyclase enzymes, both of which are inhibited not only by intracellular calcium, but also by uh, G-alpha-I uh, subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins. Okay, so the two members of this family are adenylcyclase 5 and also adenylcyclase 6. Okay, so both of these will be inhibited by the presence of calcium, and they'll also be inhibited by alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins that are 
related to the G alpha I's. Okay, so all three of the G alpha I's will inhibit these. So G alpha I1 to G alpha I3. In addition, the two splice variants of G alpha O will inhibit these, and also G alpha Z will inhibit these. Okay, and this is important to understand. Whilst the alpha SGTP subunits activate all adenylalcyclases, the alpha I subunits do not inhibit all adenylalcyclases. They inhibit some of them, and these five and six ones are the ones that are actually inhibited by uh, these alpha I subunits, along with their close relatives, the alpha O's and the alpha Z's. Okay, right, so that's that family. Next, there is a final family with the final uh, adenylyl cyclase that's membrane bound within it. Okay, and this is the forskolin insensitive family. Okay, so forskolin is a drug that is not used clinically, it would probably be extremely toxic, but it's an incredibly valuable experimental drug. It's used in experimental pharmacology all the time, okay? And the power of forskolin is that it's capable of activating adenylyl cyclase enzymes. So it's capable of causing adenylyl cyclase enzymes to go from being in this inactive state to being in this active state. Now, forskolin works on all uh, eight of the first adenylyl cyclase enzymes, so adenylyl cyclase 1, adenylyl cyclase 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, but it doesn't work on the ninth. Okay, so this one goes into this family of forskolin insensitive because forskolin does not activate it, and that's adenylyl cyclase 9. Okay, so that's the classification of the nine adenylyl cyclase enzymes which are membrane bound uh, into these four families. Okay, what I now want to discuss is how the alpha SGTP subunit is going to promote the activation of adenylyl cyclase enzymes. Okay, and let's draw a little picture of this. So, basically, what the alpha SGTP uh, subunit does is it binds to both the C1 domain and the C2 domain and brings them close together. Okay, and this promotes the dimerization of C1A and C2A. Okay, so this is quite difficult to draw, but we'll have a go. So here is our transmembrane domain 1. Okay, so this is transmembrane domain 1, this cluster of six membranes spanning alpha helices. Here's the amino terminus of our adenylyl cyclase enzyme. Here is our C1 loop, okay, we then have transmembrane domain 2, this cluster of six membranes spanning alpha helices, then we have C2, okay, and here is the carboxylic acid terminus of the polypeptide. So here is C2A here, and then we've got C1A here, okay, and I don't want to block it too much. Right, now, what is the alpha SGTP subunit going to do? Well, I'm going to have to squash it in here, but I'll get, the, hopefully, the principal cross. So here is our alpha S subunit, still with its lipid moiety attaching it in. Okay, so uh, I'm just having to draw this in any way I can. So here is our alpha S subunit. So I'll colour this in red. Or it could be an alpha ulf, okay? But we'll focus on alpha S, because they're the more important ones. Okay, so here is uh, G alpha S, and it could be any one of the splice fans. And I'm not going to attempt to put the GTP in there, uh, but the GTP would be bound in there. In fact, I might label it up. So there would be a GTP bound in here. And basically what it does is it binds to a portion of the C1 loop, and it also binds to a portion of C2, and it holds them close together. And this promotes the dimerization of C1A here with C2A here. Okay, so that's how the G alpha S subunit activates the nine adenylyl cyclase enzymes by promoting the dimerization of C1A with C2A. Okay, and as I say, I'll stress once again, it works on all nine. Okay, right. Uh, now, coming back to that G beta gamma stimulation. Okay, so if we're now talking about adenylyl cyclase 2, adenylyl cyclase 4, or adenylyl cyclase 7, which remember we're in that second family of adenylyl cyclases here, the G beta gamma stimulated. 
basically, if this enzyme here is one of these three, uh, it's in the denylylcyclase 2, in the denylylcyclase 4, or in the denylylcyclase 7, which has been activated by a G alpha S subunit with GTP, then if the beta gamma complex comes along after that, okay, so let's say here we have a beta gamma complex. So here's our beta subunit, here is our gamma subunit. If this comes and binds to the adenylylcyclase on top of the G-alpha-S, okay, um, then the activation of the adenylylcyclase will be taken even further, basically. So even more activity. So the activity will go up. But G-beta-gamma on its own is not good enough to activate them. They, it can only make the activation that the G-alpha-S subunit does more, basically. And it will only do that for these three adenylcyclases. Adenylcyclase 2, adenylcyclase 4, and adenylcyclase 7. The G-beta-gamma-stimulated adenylcyclases. Okay, right. So, we have now seen, then that the activation of our GS heterotrimeric G protein, which produces this alpha S subunit with GTP bound, is going to activate uh, all nine adenylcyclase enzymes. The beta gamma subunit will help activate these four here, sorry, these three here, okay? And what is going to be the result of this? Well, we're going to produce a lot of cyclic AMP, CAMP. Okay, so cyclic AMP is going to go up within the cytoplasm. What we now want to see is what is the effect of cyclic AMP going up in the cytoplasm. And this is going to be the activation of protein kinase A. And we'll discuss that in the next video.